All right, so listen, 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 all right? This was one of the best labyrinths I have played. Now, I don't know if, if I just got lucky. I don't know what it was, but this labyrinth was actually well made. They listened on most of the changes that players have asked, and they kind of implemented it into this one. Now, again, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I found it easy, and I'm the only one who found it easy. Um, I finished it on my second try. First try, I basically got destroyed by the second boss. Uh, second try, I knew what to at least go for beforehand uh, because I knew the type of the uh, character being, uh, what is it, I think, I think blue, which is why I destroyed my red characters. So I pre-prepared with a different set of uh, team to go into that. I would say this is the greatest season just because there's so many good changes. First off, if you suck at the game, not being mean, but like if you really don't know passives, you really don't know team comps, you don't know synergies, they've made it easy because they've given you an ability where while you are progressing, you are actually earning something that can give you a head start into actually clearing it, right? It's gonna be if, orange, if your RNG sucks. If you suck at just getting good RNG, well, guess what? You got this. If you can't get like the 100% team comps correct, if you don't know the team comps 100% correctly, this is a new mechanic where while you are going through, right, you're gonna hit up a shop. In one of the shops, whichever one you may end up at, like a shop like this, you can actually purchase for 20 of the currency given to you, this one over here, a buff, which is like this, right? It's gonna be red, green, or blue. It's gonna be a level-based system, where right now I only got level two and I still cleared it, but it's basically a constant buff that will always be occurring, giving you some sort of basic stat increase, some sort of stuff like that, and you can level it up constantly. Again, there's three different ones you can purchase, which is really cool to me. That's like a really cool system that first off helps players that just can't get a win in this. Um, second, this one has like no festival units. I did not run into a single festival unit the entire time. So it's mainly you using like Tyr, Brunhild, um, Roxy, Chandler, Green Sariel. There is literally not that many units in this thing um, that are of that big, you know, festival category, broken category, which is first off also really cool. I actually got to use units that I normally don't use um, or haven't used in a little bit. Red Matrona was the absolute carry. So I would recommend if you are picking up uh, on global, it's, it's Red Matrona. She's going to carry for you, right? And this one more so isn't actually, you know, character-based. This is 100% passive-based, right? The last one negated all passives. You had, like, two passives, and they were pointless every single time. This one is heavily passive, like, heavy, where if you get the human one over here, like the human 100% increase or the giant increase, you're good to go. Um, if you get the critical buffs, if you get the just um, every orb in your uh, gauge gives you 10% extra attack, there are so many buffs here to actually help you, and they're not even hard to get. Each floor gives you three to four passes, which is also freaking cool in itself. And then while you're clearing through the initial floors, it gives you 1500 base currency. It gives you a crap ton of currency already to go into this already getting started, uh, clearing out whatever you need to. So for example, I can buy these things out real quick and I've already unlocked the new shop. So I've already started my grind into actually farming this out, which is another nice little neat thing that they added in. Um, so I have to say, out of everything, they've listened to so many little aspects that players have been asking um, for this one. They didn't make it insanely hard where you're pulling out your hair. I think it is much better. And this one isn't the middle floors are going to kill you. It's more so the, the middle stages, rather. Uh, it's more so the bosses. The bosses may be a little bit difficult, but there is no stupid revive passive. There is no stupid thing. If you read them and you understand what you have to do, you will get through them, okay? And it's not going to be an insane kind of hair pulling experience. It's going to be fun, right? I have the gameplay. I want to show it to you. It's actually very cool, but let me let me hop to that. Let me pull that up real quick. So I got the video here for you. I can actually show it to you what the characters were at the start. Uh, so you can see I started this runoff with zero of the actual buffs because I didn't buy any in my previous run. In this run, I did buy a few because I had the points to. Uh, these are the starting characters. You have Derriere, you have Gallant, you have um, Matrona, Green, Hendrickson, and um, Eliz, right? I would say the best bet is going to be Matrona. Her taunt is nuts. And on the first uh, Chandler phase, he is green. So getting a red unit like that's going to be very helpful. Um, personally, I think that, yeah, in my opinion, this is my opinion. I, I want to make it abundantly clear. I just punched my mic, my bad. But I want to make this abundantly clear. It could be hard for a lot of players. Maybe I just got luck or whatever. But on my first playthrough, it was super easy. On my second playthrough, it was super easy. I, I, I don't know. It's just the first one I messed up, like, kind of myself. Where first, he got a gold card. Uh, the second boss is Kuzak, by the way. First one's Chandler. Last one is Demon King Meliodas, which is shocking. Um, but yeah, on the second one with, uh, with Kuzak, he got a gold card three times in a row. Imagine getting three gold cards. So he killed my Matrona. He killed my second unit. I only had two units left. And then he one-shot the other unit, right? Even though, like, 
I had Death Pierce, right? And Death Pierce was able to do so much damage on him that you have to realize that it's not a hard boss at all. Really, it isn't. Um, if you were to just do team comps correctly and everything like that, uh, you will have fun. You'll be pretty much clear to go through this. Um, they're going to give you, like, gear hard. They're going to give you, like, uh, Eliz constantly, where you can get heals constantly also. So you have a taunt unit. You have your heal unit. You have your DPS unit. It's actually synergy like there's actual team building involved it's not like oh i just need uh you know in the first one attack to Sable merlin second one i need just escanor third one i just need trader meliotis fourth one i need my yell it's like you can just run any team you want and you'll still win um roxy was the carry what was it uh what, what is her name um lilia freaking christmas lilia carried me on so many stages red jericho uh, carried me till the end until she died um, like they were all actually each character actually did something right so it's not like I just need a festival unit there are so many units right tier exists uh, which you'll see me kind of replaced here uh, or not picked here but I picked someone else instead because in the depths you can't debuff and on the middle stage you can't debuff right so there's no point in picking up the uh, tier there's no point it's not it's not like applying a debuff that will work um, so there's no point in picking him up uh, he could be good maybe but I just didn't go for it I felt that Roxy with her uh, kind of cheese passive which is giving more damage would be much better and that's why I went for that um, Brunhild another very powerful character so they cooked they cooked now I did pause here and there I was like playing multiple things um, while all this was going on but um, yeah I'm telling you now but yeah through everything um, when they said in the dev notes that they would take care of it and they would fix things I personally think they did. Again, I'm making this abundantly clear, this personal stuff, because people could try this out and be like, oh my God, this is insanely hard. But I usually, when I do go through it, if I don't beat it like the first two, three times, then I will tell you unequivocally it is hard because I usually can beat it when it's easier um, pretty fast. But yeah, this time I got through it in two attempts. The first attempt was my mess up and the fact that he got gold cards. The second attempt was just flawless, literally flawless, right? So for me, um if you're if you're looking for a decent run or a uh a kind of fun run that's this one i i think this one's actually really good um like if i if i were to go through it again and i didn't pick roxy there were so many other characters i could have picked and they weren't forcing you they weren't like shoving festival characters down your throat um where you had to pick them like genuinely there were so many different characters you could have get uh, could have went with uh, there was green sariel there was chandler there were so many things there um again i basically on the final one which you'll see what it is, Demon King Meliodas, I basically one-shot him, which was like the funniest thing in the world uh, with Roxy. So I, I have to say, yeah, it, it's it's kind of good. It, it's kind of good, okay? But um, definitely they uh, also took that thing with the uh, the new buffs, which can constantly be applied. That's another cool system that got implemented, which I think that if you do have an issue with this uh, entire thing, all you have to do is keep farming the second floor and picking up those stones because it's not given to you on the fr uh, first floor, which again, I'll show it to you when I get to a shop. Again, these middle floors aren't really too hard, so nothing to see there. Uh, this pick over here wasn't really anything good. I picked Gerhard for the heal because it's going to be pretty helpful. Uh, so this is Chandler. Let me show you Chandler first. But um, yeah, there is no shop on the first floor that actually grants you those buffs. The only buffs you can kind of expect um, mainly are going to be on the second floor. So that's where you're going to have to actually farm. Uh, if you really can't beat one of those stages for that additional percentages, um, you have to farm on the second floor, uh, which is, again, it's fine. If you can't beat it, you have to do that anyways. Uh, the first floor isn't too hard to get through. So you'll be constantly on the second floor. Again, Cusack's where I died. So that may be the problem for you. If you keep buying that buff, get more and more stats, more and more stats, uh, that's there. Uh, again, these two bosses, they didn't really have that many gimmicks that were annoying. Um, the one that was probably the most annoying is uh, kind of Cusack, just because he gets a uh, sort of revive. He gets some sort of... Uh, if, if he has max, uh, apparently, gauge, you can do a lot of damage to him. So if you bring a character that can drop his ult gauge, you can literally keep just destroying him, which is also pretty cool. Um, Chandler's a little bit annoying because he does have a buff. Unless you, If you cancel the buff, you're going to actually be pretty much good in that situation. Um, if you cancel the buff you're then actually able to uh, get through it, but he has some sort of immortality, which is, again, very annoying. But um, you'll see here, I get to clear through it with the uh, with the ult. Um, and again, I have like 20 passives active that say, if you have uh, an ult orb, every ult orb will give you 10% attack. So it's all going hand in hand, which was pretty nice. Uh, but I'll show it to you here where we get to the uh, the part. Um, so here I picked the, uh, the ult increase, I continuously went through. Again, most of the time she will uh, actually not get attacked mainly because you know of her uh, stats that are increased already so much. Uh, this pick, 
Nothing really good. I went, I went for a skip there. I went for Lilia over Jericho. Lilia was just an absolute carry. So definitely one of my favorite characters to pick up. Uh, more buffs. I kept buying. So this is it. This is the shop. There you go. This one I want to show you. But I went to go see if the passives are good. I'm like, nah. Passives are turd. I'll just buy this. It will tell you like this is a um this is something that will be applied to your account. It won't leave until the end of the season. Pretty much that's there. And then it's gonna give you some stat increases. I think this one said penetration and something else. Um, so that's what the stat increase was for because it was the red one. The life steal is for the green one and then HP. I think that's like the raw stats that get increased there. And uh, then there's a blue one which I didn't get to see at all. Um, I'm guessing that's defense and stuff like that. But that's that's one I did not see at all. I saw red and green, uh, two times red, two times green. Um, so I, I think the third one is blue, given it's red and green. But I don't actually know, so I don't want to like lie to you and tell you something wrong. But um, for what it is, they uh, definitely uh, kind of took that part, which we asked that since the beginning of the game. Think about that now. Since the beginning of getting labyrinth, we asked for an overall stat increase that you can like farm in a way to make it a little bit easier. And I think that after the last season, which was very difficult, people were crying constantly. Like, dude, this is insane. What the hell are you doing? You, you made it like insanely hard. And it was like a good costume at that point too, where players really wanted to farm it and they just couldn't, okay? So definitely from that season, they took more improvements to it. Um, and again, they wiped the festival line because they said that this mode originally was to use characters you don't normally use. I don't normally use uh, Gerhard, but she carried me for a while. I don't normally use Matrona, but she carried me throughout the entire stages. Um, if I were to swap out my team, there are other characters I don't normally use that would be pretty much helpful here. Uh, Lilia, I haven't used in a very long time, but she did very well. She was still hitting for so much damage constantly. Uh, and I, without even having Rainrock uh, or other Catastrophe characters on the team, uh, when I got, what is it, uh, Roxy, she then got so much better also. Uh, so hand in hand, most of this was very well done. So uh, that's there. But I will show you what Cusack looks like. Again, I'll go through this stuff. You don't really care for the middle stages. Oh uh, yeah, I bought another buff just so you know. Um, again, that's going to get it, but now an increase. It was level one at first. Now it's level two because I went to go and purchase it. I'll show you that at least so you at least are aware. See that? So again, I get different stats there. I purchased those stats. Um, I was looking to see if there's a different character here that I wanted. I didn't want one. Uh, so I did buy this. Um, I lied to you. I buy one of this. This is crit chance, I think I bought. Yeah, this is crit chance increase, uh, which I kind of wanted. And then I bought the stats. So I bought both those. Um, and then I went into this. This boss is a little bit annoying, right? So you'll see what I kind of mean by that. Um, he will lifesteal a crap ton. I think after every turn, he does 30% lifesteal. Um, and he does a lot of damage. So my Matrona survives, which I'm super happy for, because again, I got like an HP passive, which I would recommend find HP passives. It's pretty good too. So Lily is attacking. Now you have to get him to like 60% or below. So we did that. Then she dies. And then we're going to lose also our, I think, Gerhard. I think, oh no, I th oh, no, no, she dies, right? So we did this, we did this. We went for the heal. Uh, we potentially could have killed here if we hit all the crits on uh, Lilia. I didn't do it though, just in case. Um, and then every time he attacks you, he deletes a card, which is also super annoying. Uh, so he, he deleted all the cards there, and then we just kind of destroyed him here. Um, but again, you do hit for a lot of damage with all the buffs you do pick up. Uh, we did lose two characters, which is, again, perfectly fine. Um, but, you know, I, that's why I kind of opted more so for a green character this time and a blue character, uh, just because at least we have that. So I have a heal. I have Nanashi, which is keeping his ult kind of subdued, which actually helps you a ton because his ult will one-shot you. Regardless of what type you are, his ult will one-shot you. So bringing some sort of ult control, uh, control is big. I would recommend to bring someone like uh, Derry. There's a green Derry on the first stage. Uh, she has great ult control and she's a green character. So that's there. The only RNG aspect in that is she's gonna, or he's gonna continuously, you know, delete your cards. So if you delete the card that is the ult control, you, well, GG's, you're done for, right? But if you have Nanashi on bench, you can't really delete Nanashi unless he kills him, which kind of did. But until then, you were doing fine uh, to kind of destroy there. But um, his passive is something like when he has five stacks, uh, when his ult's like maxed out, you can do a lot of damage to him. Um, here, I went for the ult, uh, for the giant uh, buff. I was like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have, because I'm not going to pick up any giants beyond this point. Who really can I get? I was hoping Fez Dien was there, but there is no festival unit, right? So I'll reset here. No festival unit. I'm like, damn it. I should have went for a hero one, or sorry, human one, because Roxy's there, and Roxy's going to be absolutely a carry. So I swapped out Gerhard. Um, I put Roxy on. Now I did it again, and then I saw Brynhild. I'm like, damn. Um, so I did go for a human buff, yes, which was immaculate getting a human buff right there from the shop um and if i didn't get a human buff there i was probably done for i think right I, I would have to rely on matrona doing all the damage which she got the giant buff already so i had two chances to pick one of the buffs um and if you properly built your team it'll 100 work now let's say you pick the demon buff you have two more chances from this point onwards to get another character so there are so many chances so if you mess up if rng isn't favoring you on this last stage there are so many chances right i have a character pick over here 
which again, I have a chance for a demon character. I can reset if need be. I picked the human character because I got the human buff. Now, let's say I messed up. Let's say I didn't get the character I was looking for, but I picked up a giant and a fairy buff. Now I need to find a giant and a fairy uh, or an unknown and a fairy or whatever. There's another pick over here. So there's multiple chances to help you. Uh, there was two chances to get passives, three chances to get a character. So there's plenty of chances on this final floor uh, to give you something to kind of beat the last boss. Um, and again, the last boss could be insanely hard. It could be. It's just... The passives that I went with and the characters that I went with were so good that I one-shot the Demon King melee, right? So, I don't know if it's actually insanely hard. Uh, he does have some really crazy kind of passives. Um, he will constantly heal 30% every time you attack him. Um, if you do attack him, you'll get Ignites on yourself, which he will do insane damage if you have Ignites. That's also what it said. Um, he will constantly get... Uh, so, he will constantly also skill rank up himself. What the hell? Um, there are so many different passives that are on him, but because I kind of picked pretty well i kind of destroyed so didn't really matter to me um i had multiple chances again to pick so if rng wasn't favoring me this time there were there were multiple chances right i think that matrona would also still be able to do pretty good damage um and given the taunt i still think we would have won even how kind of hard i was placing it to be i don't know in my opinion i think it would be fine but going through it coming to the end here um i won't show you what depths look like i think we all know what depths look like it is still pretty easy but yeah there's the demon king melee um it took me a while to like translate his passives like my phone is like bugging here um but i read through them there are a lot of passives and they're so freaking annoying all of them are so annoying right but he has a crap ton of passives i read through all of them I'm like all right this is gonna be uh <laughs> this is gonna be terrible that was like my first impression i'm like oh we're done for it um, i was checking like what stats i have what passives i have i'm like all right i'm dead um, i load in we out cc'd by the way um, it looks like on this one also you can out CC every single time. I was like, should I just full send? And I just full sent. I was like, you know what? Can't be that bad. There we go. <laughs> and there we go. I was like, oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> We're done. Um, so I would recommend picking up Roxy. She's gonna be an absolute carry. And you see right there, 584 is the currency. We got 584. And at this point, you see, I'm like, this is at three uh, three times speed, by the way. And I'm like paused for a second. I was like, I was partying. I stood up like, yes, dude. <laughs> this was like a 40-minute recording. Um, and I finally beat him like, dude, no way. I wasn't expecting it to be, again, that easy. Um, but I went through it very, very fast. Um, in comparison, the last one took me a few tries. I told that to you constantly. The last one took me a few tries. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, a super, super easy uh, playthrough. But with that, I basically finished the entire season. Um, and now I just have to farm the depths and get the Bond costume, which the Bond costume is pretty cool too. Probably that is the best Bond costume he has for, for Transcendent Bond. That is the best one, unequivocally, all right? But, um, and like, he has so many costumes too. We have the free one, the other free one. We have the uh, tracksuit one. We have the the two ones that were paywalled, right? So five costumes, theoretically, two are paywalled though. So that makes sense. But again, there's that. That is the uh, the season. Let me know what you think. Again, maybe my take is wrong completely. I could definitely be wrong here. But I when I go through them, and if I go through them that fast, that, mu that must mean it must be easy. Um, but we'll see when JP comes out and more players talk about it. But uh, yeah, this would be on KR, by the way. So now you know, now you know.